by tips. Welcome to another Tech by Tips video. In today's video, I'm going to bring you something different. I was working with a project here at home the past week, and I have questions for you guys. I don't know if you have uh, stumbled across this situation. I had a computer in parts, basically, and everything was working. It was one of those workstations from Dell back in 2007. Precision T7400. It's a good computer, and I needed a computer to get a server up and running, but I didn't have any available I was like huh maybe I should use that one that I have in pieces there I don't know if you have come uh, to this situation also but specifically with Dell computers I've noticed that they tend to build things very customized instead of using the standard available out there for everything so for example the connectors are different they're not like the motherboard connectors to the front panel are not the same as any other computer you find out there is a custom one the layout of the case is also different so you can only put those parts in a case that is for that computer and in this case this computer originally i i bought what i thought was only a case from ebay from a person and when i got the case it turned out to be a full computer that was actually working so i ended up back in the same place where i had this computer in parts and i couldn't do anything with it because the case you know i didn't have a case for it so I decided that I was going to build a wooden PC case for this and it was going to be utilitarian, nothing fancy, just wanted to make sure that I can fit it there, can be secure, nothing bad can happen to it, it has good air inflow and outflow and that it does a job. So I decided to come up with the coffin as the name for this idea. So I decided to create a base box basically where I'm going to put all the parts together and it's going to be like a coffin that opens and closes. So there's things that I definitely want to improve after this is done but the base idea is that utility over it being pretty right now and just getting the server going in a place that can kind of protects it so let's get to that um so the first thing that i did is i measured another t7400 machine to kind of see what the dimensions of that are and i saw that the case height was like 21 and a half inches and it was about eight and a half inches thick and so i said okay let's use that as a base to build a case for this computer and i kind of measured you know the whole that I needed for the expansions, for the intake, uh, for the air, and the motherboard, IO, and all that. And I kind of used that as a, a bare idea of what to do with the wood. And I bought a panel of uh, half inch plywood and I was going to work with that. So once I had that basic idea of what I wanted to do, then I kind of started laying out the parts that I had to figure out what the best way to organize everything was. So here's the motherboard that I have for this. Uh, PC. It came with two Xeon uh, processors. The, I was just kind of figure out where I would put this on the board. I took out the heat sinks and I just used the motherboard as a base to measure where I was going to put all the things. So I decided I was going to put the motherboard all the way to the edge so that the IO is exposed because I didn't have the face of the IO either. So it would just basically have to be exposed like that. But that would give me enough space on the left and on the right to kind of use as an anchor point for the walls that were going to be used on the other edges. So I was kind of measuring out where I'm going to put the, the walls, if, if I put them outside, if I put them inside. And I also put the power supply unit there to kind of measure how much space I had um, between all the parts. And I thought that this was probably the best way to go about this, putting them like this. Then I uh, mark the holes on the board where I need to cut and where I need to lay the stuff out. So in this case, it's for laying the motherboard. I put the holes that I'm going to use to put the standoff screws to separate it from the board. And I marked where the power supply unit was kind of going to be. And if you see here, uh, I was using a half inch 2x4 birch wood panel for this. So it did the job. It was cheap enough but it was strong enough. So that's how it ended up looking like. I measured that the parts were gonna be there. I made sure to mark them. I marked the holes as you saw before in the picture so that I would know where to put those standoff screws. Then that's how it looked like in the end with all the screws marked and all the places kind of designed for the hardware. So then I proceeded to kind of cut that bottom part off from the uh, wood panel that I had. And since this was pretty heavy, I used this as a counterweight on the other side. And then I just went ahead and cut the wood. So there we go, you see me doing the cutting here. Pretty straightforward. And got to the point where I got that bottom wood 
out of there then i was gonna cut one of the edges and that's the edge that's gonna be covering the io and the connector for the power supply unit so i cut that off also and once i had that done then i decided to 3d print a holder for the power supply unit because i wasn't sure if i was gonna lay the coffin sideways or if i was gonna lay it standing so i needed something to hold that power supply unit in place my 3d printer base was kind of small so i couldn't do a lot with that i was trying to see if i could fit the holder in there so that was the maximum size i could print i decided then while that was printing to use a 2.5 millimeter drill bit to start making the holes for the standoff screws and then I started putting the standoff screws in the panel for the motherboard to be put on top of that so as you can see I got that small drill bit into my drill and then I started penetrating the board a little bit what I thought would be the right amount to put into the panel and I drilled all the holes it's a little bit smaller than the actual uh, thread of the standoff screws because I wanted that to be tight I would then use the drill to force the standoff screws into the hole and then that way they would be tight and it would be sturdy in there so that's how i put them all in there and as you can see it was pretty good it was solid and they would not come off and that was perfect that's what i needed this is a view of all the standoff screws once they were placed in the board and it was in all the perfect positions that I needed for the motherboard. So then I laid the motherboard on top of it to check if everything was in line and it was perfect for my motherboards. Then I said, okay, I'm gonna fix the motherboard in there so that then I can continue working on it. So I fastened it with screws. I cleaned up the processor and the heatsink and then I put the sink, uh, heat sinks in again. So that was already set up and it was sturdy safe and it did its job perfectly so i didn't have to worry about the motherboard touching the wood in any way then after that i was looking at how i'm going to cut the hole for the panels for the owl uh, io on the motherboard and also to have a space for me to plug the power supply unit cable so i needed to cut a hole for the power supply unit and for the io so i was measuring that i put the the wood on the position where it was supposed to be and I marked that and then the 3d print was completed and it turns out that the surface that I had in my 3d printer was not big enough so it couldn't span the the distance that I needed to mount on top of the power supply unit so I had to figure out what I was going to do with this so what I decided to do was I was going to cut it and then just use the edges of it like uh, handles and then I decided to print another one which was going to be just that the, the little handles for the power supply unit holder. While that was working, I cut the one that I already printed to just use that. I didn't want to uh, waste the plastic. So that ended up working fine for me. If you see, I put it there holding the power supply unit. As an example, it wasn't put there yet, but I was just validating if it would do the job. And it seemed to do the job for me. So then I started working on the holes that I needed to cut here. I Another thing that I wanted to do is I needed to make sure that that power supply unit would not move. So I used those fasteners, the metal fasteners, to kind of hold it in place. I put one in front and one in the back so that it would not move out of that. And then I would use the plastic holders on the sides to hold it in place. And it ended up working pretty nicely. As you can see here, metal fasteners in place. Now it doesn't move. It's perfectly fixed in that position. And I did the same for the back side of the power supply unit. So now you can see it does its job, which is preventing that power supply unit from coming out. And now that I have that in there, I just needed to work on the plastic fasteners. So I just drilled them into place and they do their job. But I noticed that it, was, it still had a little bit of uh, leeway on movement. So I was going to put the other two on the very edges of the power supply unit to make sure to restrict the movement of the power supply unit and it, it was fastened in place and it worked so then i went ahead and cut the holes that i had measured for the io and the power supply unit from the board that would be on the back of the case then i i screwed that into the baseboard and then i checked that i could actually hold the back plate with that uh, standing feet that i created there standing foot that I created there and that worked for me so now when we look at it I have everything fastened and I have the space that I need for the connectors in there so I can move ahead to the next step so now this is the the 
result of that backplate. Now I have exposed the motherboard I.O. and I have space for those connections and the uh, power supply unit is uh, accessible and is fixed also in place. So now that I have the size of the back plates and the side plates, I'm going to cut the other plates that I need. So this is going to be now the front side of the case. So I use the back side to measure it and then I cut that. So now I have the other side cut. Then now I need to cut the sides instead of the front and the back now to the sides. Those are a little bigger, so I need to measure it to cut it. And it was about uh, 20 inches or so because I made my case a little smaller. And that was more than enough space for what I wanted to do. So now I was going to mark the wood and cut those into place. So now I have the two boards that I'm going to cut that are going to be the sides of my case. So now I just cut those. This was pretty straightforward because it was straight lines, so I could cut without any problems. And I extracted those two parts out of the panel, the wood panel, and then sanded that and got it ready. The next thing is I wanted to check what kind of hole I would need to leave for the PCI connections. So I used a network card to kind of measure that. And then using that, I put the back panel again against it and I measured the distance that I needed to cut on that and then decided on the hole that I was going to cut for that. It's not the best, uh, but if I need to use those PCI ports, then I have a way to do that. Now, I also needed to identify where I was going to put the fans because this um, specific workstation could run very hot because it, it, it used to be a powerful server at the time and I noticed that there was a lot of ventilation on it. it. It was designed to have four fans. So I decided to have one extraction fan uh, close to the memory modules and then three intake fans to bring cool air inside the case. So I was identifying where I was going to put the extraction fan on the back plate and I marked it and then I just needed to cut a hole on that to allow uh, the air to flow in. So I use a, a round uh, drill hole um, maker to make the hole for that uh, fan. And I measured that it was a four inch uh, hole that I needed to make for it. So that's what I used. Once I had cut that, then I could start uh, painting the back plate. So I got a spray paint and I went ahead and painted the back plate black so it looks like a coffin nicely maybe later i will put a vinyl on top of it and then it'll look better or something like that well for now that's going to be more than enough that's the back of the case now i decided to 3d print a contraption where i would put the 2.5 inch uh, disc for this machine i was going to use a, a 2.5 uh, ssd so i decided to 3d print that and then I secured the back plate because I, the back plate was already done. It was I didn't I didn't need to do anything else with it. So I just fastened it to the base plate and now that part was done. Then if you look at the back of the back plate, it looks good. There's the hole, there's the fan there. There's the space for the PCI Express slots. There's the power supply unit hole and the out, I, I, motherboard input output is already accessible. So that's good enough for me. That's going to do it. That's a, a better a better view of it. You can see the whole thing. And now I was going to work on the front side of the case. So I was kind of figuring out where it was going to be. And then I put brackets that were going to hold it in place. And then I drilled those into the base so that I would know where to put things later. I was trying to make sure to leave space for a fan in the front side that would be an intake fan. And I was not sure if I was going to put an optical drive on this machine or not. So that's another thing that I was leaving space for just in case. But that ended up uh, being un unnecessary in the end. I decided to go against it. But I marked all the spots and then I went ahead and drilled everything into place. I painted the front panel and then I looked for the place to put the hole for the fan. Uh, ideally, the fan should push the air from the outside into the CPU uh, heatsink and then through that to the 
memory modules so I thought that the right side was the best place to put that fan there so that's where I drilled a hole and then I measured one of the sides to put it into place there because I also needed to put another intake fan there and I was looking for a place where I could do that in the end I decided that I was going to kind of lay it out this way where the hard disk was going to be on the right side close to where the CPU area is because the fan was going to blow that way so it could also blow on the hard disk too and then I was going to put the other intake fan on the left side of the case blowing air in that direction too and then so I have air coming from the left to the right and then on the right side pushing that and new air to the CPU and then through that to the memory modules and there was another fan that I placed right next to the memory modules that is an intake fan so that also brings air directly into the memory modules so then I fixed the hard disk this is a sample disk that I had just to take measurements and, th and see if everything worked and it worked so I was able to fix that in place and I marked where the optical drive would be in the case that I were to use it but I did not use it and I marked where I would need to cut a hole in the front panel if I were to do that but I did not cut that hole uh, I painted the side panels already because they they were done I ha already had made the hole for the fan and I mounted the fan so everything was good it just needed to be painted and now I kind of put everything together the back plate and the two side plates with the fans mounted in and everything was looking good then I went ahead and checked where the space was I had plenty of space for everything this is the point where I decided at this point I'm not gonna put the optical drive I'm just gonna leave it marked but in case I need it in the future but not now and then I went ahead and used uh, and connected the intruder switch uh, in there and found a place to put it so I hot glued it into place and that was pretty uh, steady there it was sturdy no problems with that and then I did a power on test to check if the machine was working and if everything was working properly if the fans were working how much air was moving in the case and I was satisfied with the amount of air was that was being moved in the case and that the computer was powered on normally so I was happy with that and here you can see that everything is working without any issues it was able to boot from the disk that I had uh, already prepared for this machine so I didn't even need a graphics card in this machine because I could, I could connect to it from the network so I just validated that it, it was accessible and everything was working I made sure that I fixed the front panel to the actual wooden panel that I built for it in the hole and everything fit in there perfectly I connected the fence I connected everything that I needed and then I went ahead and checked that the case closed perfectly in all the sides and how it looked and everything was working properly so that was good to me and then I fixed the four walls on the sides to the bottom plate and that sealed what the case was going to be like so it ended up with plenty of space for everything that I needed and I for like the excess cables I can just push them to the side of the power supply unit so for me that was more than enough and here's the finished case when I put the lid on top and it looks like a nice coffin everything is working the front panel is working easily accessible all the fans are working there's plenty of air moving through the case so the computer is not getting hot at all and it doesn't make a lot of noise this these type of machines are notorious for making a lot of noise because they needed to cool down but in my case it was not making a lot of noise so to me that was great it worked exactly as I needed it here's uh, when I open the coffin you can see the machine and everything if I need to work on something it's easy I have easy access to it so that's how it looks that's how you open it and close it and then I decided to put it in a place in my house where I could use it and test that I have access to it from my computer and everything was nice and it looked decent enough in its final place so that's it that's how I created my coffin for my T7400 it's utilitarian like I said it's not the, the prettiest case but it does its job and it kind of looks in my opinion looks nice um, so yeah if you have had this issue before where you have like 
parts of the computer and then you can't really find a case. Can you please let me know which brand you've had this issue with? I know that the Dell computers tend to be like that, but I don't know if there's any other famous brands where they do, you know, they go this way of creating custom connectors and custom cases and then people have to, you know, kind of deal with that. In my case, this this the reason why I had to do this because I couldn't find a case off the shelf that I could put all the parts in, but it ended up doing its job nicely and it works for me. Let me know if you have experienced this, which type of machine you couldn't find a case for. And if you've done something like this, like building a PC case or something like that, that's going to be it for this video. It's kind of long already, so I'm going to try to edit it to cut any excess or any unnecessary things to make it shorter. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for being here. And thanks for being with me in this uh, weird experiment here. It's not a normal video, but I wanted to do something like that. Take care.